and good evening and welcome to the Business Conversation. My name is Michael A.C. Maynard, I am your host. This is the second of a four-part series. We had a show last week and we have another two shows next week and a week after. So if you're in business or want to get into business, invite your friends, your family and tell them that this show is for them. So first of all, welcome. As I said, I've got another great uh, packed show for you today. We're going to try and squeeze it all into half an hour, so uh, if you need to get to your pens, get your pads, and get ready to take some notes. As this is for Christians that are in business. So if you are a Christian that wants to get in business or in business, you're at the right place. Right, so what are we covering today? Well, today I'm going to take you through uh, just a couple of things on the agenda. One is I'm going to give you another sneak preview from my book that I've just launched. It's How to Build a Christian Business. And I'm going to be taking you through chapter 5 of that book, which talks about um, dominion in, or taking charge. Then I'm going to have a great interview with uh, an excellent colleague of mine um, who's the chief exec of a company called Just Call. Uh, they are a Christian clothing company, and he's also an amazing marketeer. So I'm going to ask him a couple of questions, and hopefully through his, uh, his answers and my questions, it can benefit all of you out there who are looking to do marketing. Uh, then I, I always try to cover something around what's happening in the business world, what's relevant. So we'll throw something in there, and finally we'll end on a word, which is always good. Okay? So let's get going. Um, all my details are on the screen. I really want to encourage you to um, uh, email me or, or, or go and click onto my website. Um, it's actually michaelacmaynard.com. Uh, I'll just go through that for you. It's www. M-I-C-H-A-E-L-A-C-Maynard.com. So there's a slight error on the screen there, but it's Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-A-C-Maynard.com. It's changing as we speak, and the website will change also. So let's get into it. Please email me as the show's going on. Um, I'm, as with last week, I'll stick true and give away five copies of my book. Um, so the first people that email me, the first five people that email me, We'll get a copy of an ebook version so you can download it straight away. How about that? Great, let's get started. So, I want to cover, as I said, chapter five from the book today. Um, and if you haven't got a copy of this, you need to get hold of it. It's a very practical book. Um, it's designed, as I said, for Christians, but for people who want to get into business. So, it's not filled with sort of uh, scriptures and, and, and a message as such. It's practical. You know, it talks about business plans. It talks about um, route to market. It talks about developing your ideas and your finance. It's very practical. Um, and it's about 12 chapters. And as I said, we're going to deal today with um, chapter 5, which is talking about dominating your market. Okay? So what do I mean by dominating your market? Well, if you're a Christian and you're in business... The, the, the God expects you to dominate. So first and foremost, let's start just there. If you're a Christian, walk in this life. In anything that you do, God expects you to dominate. So if you're called into business, that same expectation to dominate is still on you. Now, in Genesis 1 uh, verse 28, we all hear about um, when God talks about, he, let's make man in our, his own image. And he commissions man and sort of says, you know, I want you to dominate and I want you to rule and subdue. And so if we just start with that, God commissioned us, he made us to dominate. He made us to take charge. He made us to, to rule. He made us to, uh, as the Bible says, to be the head and not the tail. So if we're in business, doesn't it stand to reason that God is also telling us in business to rule, to dominate, to be the head in business and not the tail. So today, as I said, it's about domination. How can I, in business, become a market leader? How can I be at the top of my, uh, my, my chosen industry? How can I dominate my chosen industry, even if I'm just starting out? And I want to cover five points for you today that will help you uh, learn to dominate. So let's look at number one. The first thing when you are looking to dominate your market has to be ownership. Now, ownership, first of all, starts in your mind. So it doesn't matter what type of business you are doing, you need to own that business. 
and you need to have ownership. In other words, you have to say, this market is mine. It's a mindset. It says, I am going to own everything I do. Everything I put out there, my customer service, I'm going to take ownership over it. My staff, I take ownership over it. What I produce, I take ownership over it. So that means when you turn on your computer in the morning or you open your doors, your business doors, you have ownership in mind. You're going to own everything you do in that day. It also means that you, you, um, you have an understanding that you know your territory. Now, it's impossible to own your territory without knowing it, isn't it? If you don't understand your territory, in other words, if you don't understand your market, how can you truly take ownership? Now, if you look at the Bible and it talks about, um, you know, when they went into the land and there was many giants and different people in the land, they had to understand who was in the land first before they could truly own that land. So point number one tells you to know your market. Doing business is not just so easy. You need to understand your market, research your market, and you need to know it. That's whether you're in business currently or not. The second part of it talks about taking and accepting responsibility. So number two in taking dominion is taking and accepting responsibility. In other words, the buck stops with you. And as I said, if you have a staff that works for you, everything they do, you take ownership over it. I manage a lot of large-scale projects for um, public sector organisations, um, millions and millions of pounds. And any programme or any contract that I am managing, it, the buck stops with me. I take ownership. So you need to take ownership. You need to realise that your success or your failure is up to you. If you succeed, it's your fault. If you fail, it's also your fault. The ownership and the buck stops with you. You also need to realise that any product that you put out, whether how good it is or how bad it is, you need to own that. So what I recommend is every detail, understand everything that you're doing, everything that you want your business to output. Make sure you understand it. Make sure you've taken the time to research and to know it so that you're not just putting anything out there and you're being embarrassed. If you're a service-based company, ensure you understand your customers. It's not what you can give them, it's based on what they require, how you can serve them. So you have to take that responsibility and accept it. The next one talks about, third step, strategy or be strategic. In other words, you cannot uh, take dominion without writing or owning or developing a strategy. And what do I mean by that? You know, when they go to war, they don't rush out there with, you know, guns blazing. They take time and strategize. What is the best way of getting me from point A to point B? And that's what you have to say to yourself. My business is here, and I want it to be here in a year's time. What is the best way for me to get from point A to point B? It's a strategy. Then write it down. Put it down on paper. Work out the best possible way. And in that strategy, you look at all eventualities. So nothing's missing nothing's, um, and nothing's um, left out. You have to develop a strategic mind. Not always react to things, but sit back a little and think, what's the best way? I've tried this. It didn't work. So I'm going to try something else. The fourth step talks about proactivity. In this day and age, sometimes we sit and we wait for things to happen to us. If you're going to take dominion today in your business area, you need to be proactive. That means you need to put the extra hours in. You need to take time to, to move forward. You need to take time to um, spend your time, as I said earlier, researching or um, approaching your customers, asking them, what do you think of my service? How can I serve you better? But one of the key things about a Christian company, I believe, is that we are called to serve. And we need to get that in our mind. So be proactive with it. Don't just wait for things to happen. It's your responsibility, as I said earlier. When the children of Israel was taking their land, they were proactive. 
They sent spies out to see and, and to scout the land. And then once they, were, they, they knew and understood the land, they then took it with their strategy, which God gave them, took ground. The fifth step, and obviously there's many more steps, but I just wanted to give you five. The fifth step talks about making noise. In other words, once you've positioned your company, let everybody know you're here. Let everybody know. Promote, network, push your product. Think strategically how you're going to make noise. Let the bigger players know that there's a new, you know, if you're like a new sheriff in town. A, a, a person that is filled with the Holy Spirit, that has strategized and has prayed over what they're doing. You've got to make noise. No business succeeds by being quiet. If you're a shy person, you've got to learn how to be a bit more extrovert. If you really want to succeed, let yourself be seen. I remember years ago, I would do a lot in the Christian business realm, but I didn't really want to be seen. I'd do it in the background. And for my business to grow, and I, I soon realized that I had to be seen. I am the face of my company. When I go into a client, it's me they see. And so my dress has to be um, relative to what I'm, uh, I'm doing or selling to them or, or managing for them. It, it's important. So you have to make noise. Don't be scared to stand up in meetings and to put your point across. I'm not saying every time you'll get it right, but you've got to make noise and your business needs a voice. So ensure that your marketing and your, um, your promotion is correct and is right. So that's the five stages very quickly and my book covers a lot more. And as I said, if you want to grab a copy of that, I'm giving them away five ebook copies free. Feel free to email me whilst the show's on. The first five will get an ebook copy. So that's what I call dominion or five steps to dominion. I'm going to have a colleague that's coming, uh, as I said a little bit earlier, who's the, the chief exec of a company called Just Call. And he will also talk to you. We ended on marketing out of the five steps. He will kind of uh, also talk to you about marketing and how he's promoted his company and, and where he is today. And I'll ask him a few questions. So he's just dialing in now. And uh, once he's online, he'll come in and, and, and we'll, we'll get on with the interview. But I want to encourage you today. As I said, I've only covered five steps. You need to get the book if you want the rest. It's about dominion. It's about acknowledging who you are. You are the king or queen of your area, of your market, which means you have the ability to declare things, to speak things, to make things happen. You know? And remember, as, as, as um, spiritual people, the world is waiting for instruction. And it's important that you are the person that is instructing it. Because if you won't speak, somebody else will. And I guarantee that. So I wonder if Roy is, has called in yet. He's on his way, he's on his way. So as I said, Roy is the chief exec of Just Call. And I'm going to invite him right now. Hi Roy, can you hear me? Hi, how's it going? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Well, thanks for joining us on the business conversation. I've, I've just given a, um, a quick intro, really, to you with that, you know, there was a chief exec of a company called Just Call, uh, a, a Christian-based clothing company, which is excellent, because um, I'm sure out there, there are many Christians who, who, who probably have always wanted to do that, and, you, you know, you've done it, and I think it's great. Um, so I just wanted to ask you a few questions today, and I hope it will be a benefit to our viewers, if that's okay. Yeah, sure, no problem. So, so Roy, first of all, um, and I know you do many businesses, I've only mentioned just one, but how did you start out? How did you get to where you are today? Right, long journey. Uh, I started uh, in business uh, when I was just uh, left school, actually. Uh, I was good in the clothing industry, uh, did extremely well for several years, uh, got a job, got made redundant, and decided to go out and do my own thing. So uh, that was really the uh, pivotal point when I decided that, you know, I wanted to do something for myself, for my own business, rather than build up somebody else's dream. I think that's brilliant because there's, I think there's a lot of people that are probably in a situation where you are now where either they've been made redundant or they're not quite satisfied in their um, current business 
Uh, and so like you, you know, they'll probably want to, you know, to step out and do something. So if, if what would you say, uh, if, so, if somebody wanted to, to do what you did, what would you say are the, the challenges that they would probably face? What, what did you come up against? Yeah, I think it's the same for every body, Mike. Uh, the challenge is always the, um, the funding to do what you need to do. And uh, not necessarily about the funding to create the product or the business. It's about whether you've got the funds to uh, keep you going on a day-to-day -day basis um, while you're building your business. Uh, and it's quite straight. If you've got the time and the money and the persistence, you can do anything. But it's whether you can survive through that growth stage from the early start through to growing the business, taking it forward. Um, simple. I found that. I've done a number of businesses in the past, and it's always been the same thing. Can you survive through the lean times? Well, I think, let me just jump in, and I think why that's brilliant, because I think one of the biggest things whenever I talk to customers is around managing their expectations, and I try... Uh, from a project perspective to manage you know, what their expectations are of me. And I think what you said there was really key. So for, for those of you out there who are starting businesses, you know, as Roy is saying, you've got to get through that period of uh, you know, almost that survival period where you've obviously got to earn, you've got to live, and at the same time you know, you've got to do your business and, and you need funding for that business. So it's in managing your expectations. When you're, if you're out there now and you're looking to start your business, it's not going to happen just like that. And you need, a, you know, where possible, a good plan to actually get you through that period. Yeah, um, I agree with that, Mike. And I think there's a message that's uh, missing and drastically needed in the business world. And, uh, you know, even though I've said you need the uh, funds to survive through those lean times, the plan and everything else, the key thing that I always say to people is that you have to mind your own business. Okay. When I say mind your own business, the battle is always in the mind, yeah? Yeah. There's always going to be times when uh, business is low, funds are low, not getting the customers, not getting the traction, and those are the times when you think, why am I doing this? Yeah. You know, is it going to work? Those are the times when you think about giving up. So when I say mind your business, you've got to look after your mind in your business, so your mind has the strength to keep you going through those What I think is excellent about that, prior to you coming on, what I said to everybody was, the success, if their business succeeds, it's their fault, and if it fails, it's their fault. You right. know, and it's that mental strength that you're talking about, isn't it? And, and you know, in believing through the hard times, and I, I mean, like yourself, I've done many businesses, and, and there are times where you do think to yourself, do I, can I really do this? And, and so I hear you, and mental strength is, is very important. Um, can I ask you, so how was your faith? Um, how has it impacted your business? Massively, yeah. Uh, what would you say is the, I, I know time's up, but what would you say is the key thing that your faith has influenced? Really, Mike, my faith has influenced my mind, yeah? Excellent, yeah. Times when your faith will take you where your mind can't carry you, yeah? Going back to what I've said before, you know, in um, developing the idea, the concept, and through those times of getting the funding, moving it forward, whatever else, things might not be going the way you want them to go. And your mind is telling you you can't go any further. But it's your faith that keeps you there, that holds you there, and gives you the inspiration to take steps, to keep going for that next day, yeah? Yeah. And without faith, I think, I, I, I often wonder how people survive in business, you <laughs> know? You see a lot of stories where people, you know, they're rich, uh, they're doing well in the business, or on the opposite end, they're not doing well, and it's quite simple. The mind cannot carry them, where yeah. if they had faith, it would. That's brilliant. Well, Roy, I mean, for sake of time, I mean, that's a valuable, really, really valuable um, uh, word, really, and I'm going to jump on that, on the back of that. But, yeah, thank you for calling in. Um, I mean, that's a brilliant word. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's Roy. Thanks very much, Roy. I uh, much appreciate it. That's Roy Smooth from um, Just Call. Um, you know, if you, if you, in fact, what I'll do on my website, I'll put Roy's email address on there for, so you can check out his clothes uh, and his clothing company. It'll be great. It's, it's an amazing blessing. So, uh, 
you know, we've got probably about five minutes left, and I think I, I want to I bring something that Roy said that was so powerful, and, and I think it's, it's important, as I said, around managing your expectations, but he was talking about your mind and making sure that your mind can carry your business, and I think that's such a, an instrumental word, because you, if you believe you can, you can. If you believe you can't, you can't or you won't. You know, and it all starts in the mind. So if, I were, so if you were to take something away from that interview that I just did with Roy, build up your mind. And what I mean by that is not only do you strengthen your mental mind in a business capacity, but also influence it by feeding it the right type of information. You often hear successful people, they read motivational books and you know, they, they, they try not to take on negativity, they only read certain things. Ensure that your mind is filled with the right things and then underpin that by your faith. So excellent, that's a great word and I hope that you, you've taken that down. In the last few minutes, uh, as I said, what's happening new in the business world? Uh, one of the things that are happening at the moment, uh, the government's introducing enterprise zones. Um, you may have come across those and they're basically areas where the government um, is subsidising. So, so for example, there were 24 uh, enterprise zones throughout the country and if you locate your business in one of those areas, what it means is you may get a, a cheaper lease if you're renting a building, you may get money towards machinery or plants, you may get money off of um, your broadband, for example. So what they're trying to do is attract businesses to certain areas. So depending on your business, you may get an advantage from locating in an enterprise zone. So please go and check that out. There's, you, you can Google it. There's plenty of information on the web. So let me just for the last few minutes, um, kind of, as I, whenever I come on, I always pray and say, God, you know, what specifically do you want us or want me to cover on the show? And um, one of the things that God said to me around was taking charge you know, there are many of you, at the mo last time on my, on my broadcast, I said, um, I was talking to about businesses saying it's a calling. And what God was saying is there are many people sitting with businesses dormant inside of them, and they're not doing anything with it. And he wants you to take charge. Stop letting life happen to you and take charge, take ownership. You know, don't say, oh, I've got no funding. It may take you two years to get the funding, but don't give up. Take charge of your situation. You know, as Roy said, there was, he was made redundant, and at that point, he could have gone for another job, or he could have wallowed, but he said, you know what, I'm going to uh, start a business, and I'm going to stick to that business. And, and so, take charge over it. You know, you've been given dominion power. When you were made, God gave you power to rule. And so what that means is, when you, as I said, you turn on your computer, you open your business doors, your business is born to rule because you are the head of it. Make sure you have a word that governs your business and that gives it a legal ground in the spirit realm. So that means when your business is not doing so well or it's doing great, you can confess that word. You can promote that word and God will hear you because of the word. In other words, when he looks down, he won't see your business, but he'll see the word that you've placed over your business. And that word will help you take ground. So today, if you're looking to start a business, this is your time to take charge. No longer will you sit below, but you are going to be above. You are going to be the head that God had called you to be. I encourage you to get hold of, and I said it at the beginning, to get hold of my book. Um, for those who are ordering through my website, I'm also giving away my first book, uh, a free copy of that, and that is My Reason Why. That talks about your purpose, whether you're in business or not. It talks about what God has called you to be on this earth. So as I said, first five people get a free ebook. If you want to purchase the book through the web, email me. I'll give you a free copy of the second book as well, free of charge. So finally, I want to end on the scripture in Luke 19, verse 13. It talks about the man and the steward. He gave money basically to his servants and he said to them, and God is saying to us today, he said, do business until I come. That is your instruction today. God is speaking to you. And he has called you to do business. And what he's saying is, do business till I come. Thank you very much. My name is Michael A.C. Maynard. And I'll be here next week, same time, 8 o'clock, here on Faith TV. You need to tell people about it and you need to tune in. Thank you and good evening.